Okay, students, I'm coming to you live from the airport, so bear with me if there's any background noise, but I'm going to go through the math problems that you were assigned last review session for the APES math review sheet. You turned the most you turned that into me via email, but what I want you to do now is take that back out. We're going to go through the answer key. You're going to check your answers, and if there is any discrepancies, meaning if you got any wrong, you need to redo them, showing all work, using all units, making it neat, and you're going to turn it back into me so that you can get full credit. So I'm going to start... Um, what we have is uh, the problem on the left and the answer key on the right. So just see if these are the answers you got. And just to make sure you're understanding how to do it, I'm just going to go through number one. And if you got number two or three wrong, you'll have to do that on your own or ask me. Um, it says turn the following into scientific notation one billion. So let's write that out. One, there's a thousand, there's a million, there's a billion. So remember, when we're turning into scientific notation, where do we want that decimal point to be? Why don't you jot that down? Look up the rule for that. Where do you want that decimal point to be? Right now, it's there at the end of this long number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine decimal points. Decimal places, and I'm going to move it to where it should be, which is between the first one and the zero. So that will give me an answer of one, one point zero if you want times 10, and remember the exponent indicates the amount of time you move the decimal point. 10 to the 9. There you go. That's your answer. If you got any problems on the next one, the other ones, you'll have to redo that or ask me for help. All right, on this set, for number 4, 5, and 6, here's the answer key right here. Double check your answers and see if you got them correct. This one's a little trickier because you need to write the numbers out in scientific notation and then you need to do some calculation to see, um, to see what the answer would be. So you have to remember your rules about multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting things with exponents and things in scientific notation. So I'm going to do number four and if you need to redo number five or six you can ask me for help or maybe you'll figure it out after we do number four together. So the first thing I need to do is write these two numbers that are given to me. I need to write them in scientific notation. So the first one I have is 500 billion. Let's write that out. 500, there's a thousand, there's a million, there's a billion. So writing that in scientific notation requires me to move the decimal point a lot. There it is to start. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 11 places. So that gives me an answer of 5 times 10 to the 11. So let's save that for later. And now we need to turn 35,000 into scientific notation as well. So that is going to equal 3.5 times 10 to the 4th. And you can do the math yourself also. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 to the 4th. Um, and you'll find out that that is the correct answer. So these are the two numbers I'm multiplying. 5 times 10 to the 11 times 3.5 times 10 to the 4th. All right, so now how do we do this in scientific notation? You should leave it in scientific notation, and you should think of these parts separately. You should think of the front numbers as the units going together and the base tens as units going together. So. Let's just take the front numbers first. 5 times 3.5. Hopefully you can do that. Using one division, it's going to give you 17.5. The answer is going to be 17.5 times 10 to the something. We have to figure that out. It's pretty easy when you're doing multiplication. You just take the exponents and you add them together. Uh, 11 plus 4. 15. So my answer then is what I have here, circled in yellow, 17.5 uh, times 10 to the 15. Except think, think for, to yourself for a second if this is actually in scientific notation, and it is not. We need to move that decimal point over one place, making this a smaller number up front and a bigger number overall. So the correct answer would be 1.75 times 10 to the 16th, and you'll see that's the answer listed there. So in the end, uh, you have to turn it back in scientific notation and you'll get those right answers. So review the, those and see if you can get them right. 
All right, the next set is unit conversions. So we're going to use those fractions. We're going to cancel out units we're using, and we're going to convert from one to the other. So we're going to be using um, areas, square miles, acres, and hectares, and they have some calculations that are given to you. Right here is the answer key for each of these, so you can double check to make sure you got the correct answer. I'm going to go through number seven with you, so number seven is what I'm going to do. So we have a hundred square mile area of forest. I wonder how many acres that is first. So I have a hundred miles squared, okay, square miles, and I want to turn that into acres. So I like to think about the units first. Make your fraction. And I definitely want to cancel out the miles squared, and I want to replace that with acres. So I'm looking for a conversion between miles and acres, and I do see that I have one. One square mile equals 640 acres. So that's what I'm going to input into my uh, fraction that I just made down here. So I have 640 acres per one square mile. So you can see your calculation becomes really easy right away. It's going to be um, 100 times 640, obviously divided by 1, but that will give you the same answer. So uh, you should not, you should not you need to even write this down or use a calculator. Whenever you're multiplying by um, 10, 100, 1,000, 1 million, you just can't, if it's 1 is the first number and the rest are zeros, you count the zeros and that's how many times you're going to move the decimal point. So the answer for this is going to be 600 and um, so we have 640 and then 100 is two zeros in it so we add two zeros so it'd be 64,000 acres. And to prove that it's acres, we'll see that our, our units cancel out. So that's how we get the first number here. Okay. Now all we need to do is turn this into hectares. So we'll take our acres. I'm going to see if I can write this a little bit smaller. Six, four, zero, zero, zero. I'm just use A for acres for now. And I need another conversion factor to turn this into hectares. So I want the acres to cancel out, and I want it to be replaced with um, hectares. And let's see if I have a conversion factor for that. Um, I do. I have hectares and acres here. 2.5 acres, 1 hectare. And in this case, I'm going to divide. Um, you're going to divide 64,000 by 2.5. If this is confusing for you, you're welcome to move the decimal point and make this 25. As long as you move the decimal point here and make it 640,000, you can do that for both. So that's going to be some long division that I'm going to let you practice on your own. You should practice this because you're going to have to be able to do this um, on the AP exam without a calculator. And the final answer that you should get is what they have listed there, 25,600 hectares. So just a couple things to rem remember when you're doing these conversion factors is set up your units first before you even think about the numbers. Right? So when I was doing this first part, I knew I needed to, to change the units to acres. So I, did, I wanted acres in the top and I wanted miles square in the bottom so that these two would cancel out. And then you won't get confused about which way to set up this fraction. Sometimes it can be confusing whether or not you should put the 640 on the top or on the bottom. But if you, if you keep it connected with the, the units, it should be really easy to see what you need to do. So try 8 and 9 again if you got those wrong. All right, next is percentages. Um, I'm going to do a couple with you here on this one. Here's the answer. You can go ahead and check and see if you got those correct. You will have to work with percentages a lot, and they can be confusing, but um, hopefully I can explain a couple of these and you'll be able to do, do that on your own. So let's start with number 10. A natural gas power plant is 60% efficient. If one cubic meter of natural gas provides 10, or 1,000 BTUs of electricity, how many BTUs of waste heat are produced? So I want you to think about this. A natural gas power plant is 60% efficient and it's producing that much energy. So well, that 1,000 BTU represents 60% of what it could actually do if it were more efficient. Okay, so 
let's imagine if it was perfectly efficient, let's give it a capital T for like the total amount of BTUs it could produce, okay? So T is the total amount of, of BTUs it could produce, but um, instead it's only 60% efficient. So I'm going to take that T and times it by 60%, of course in decimal format. So if since it's 60% efficient, I do know that number, it's producing a thousand BTUs. Okay. So setting up this equation, I can figure out how much uh, a perfectly efficient power plant would produce. So all we're going to do is solve for T. So um, let me set this up a little bit more like algebra. So it's going to be 0.6 times T equals 1,000. And if you remember, I'm going to um, divide by um, 0.6 on both sides to get the T by itself. This cancels out. So I need to figure out what 1,000 divided by 0.6 is. Now remember, this is going to be a long division. And what you can do is you can move the decimal point as long as you move it here too. So it's going to be 6 into 10,000. Okay? And you can know that 6 goes into 10 once, and the remainder 4, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You'll figure that out. And you'll find out that the answer is... I'm cheating using a calculator. Ha <laughs> ha. 1, 2, 3, divided by 0.6 equals... Um, so I'll find out that the total, if it were perfectly efficient, would be 1,667. I'm going to round BTUs. Okay, so... Let me just put a box around that. This is if it were perfectly efficient, but it's not perfectly efficient. What percent efficient is it? 60, exactly. And so it only is providing 1,000 BTUs of energy. So if it could provide 1,667, and it's only providing 1,000, how much was wasted? Okay, how much was wasted? Hopefully you can see that. Uh, if you subtract these two numbers, pretty easy to subtraction. 1,667 minus 1,000 you'll find out that 667 BTUs were wasted. Okay? So I'm going to try one more with you. Okay, if I can erase here. Or I can't. Why can't I erase? Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, what I want to do for number 11 is a little bit similar when you think about it. It says, if 35% of a natural area is going to be developed, leaving 500 untouched, how many acres will be developed? So it says if 35 is to be developed, is that 35% untouched or developed? No, of course it's developed. It's going to leave 500 acres untouched. So 35% is developed, what percentage will be untouched? You just subtract that from 100, hopefully you realize, and you get, what do you get, what do you get? You get 65%. Okay, so these should add to it. 60 and 30 is 90, 100, okay. So 65 is untouched. So uh, to, fig to find out how many are gonna be developed, be, if we know how many are the total acres, it will be much easier to figure out. So I know that 65% of the total, let me see it's here, sorry about that, 65% of the total is 500 acres, because uh, it tells me that it left 500 untouched, and I know that 65% is untouched, so the total times 65%, is going to give me 500 acres. So again, I'm just going to solve this like algebra. I'm going to divide both sides by 0.65. Okay, same thing when you do your long division here. You can move the decimal point twice as long as you move it twice up here. Okay, and I want you should always show your long division for me at least when you're doing these. So I know you didn't use a calculator. So 500 divided by 0.65. The total was. 700 and about 69 acres. Acres. A doesn't really represent acres, so don't let me confuse you. Okay, so if the total was 
769, okay, and 500 were untouched, how many were developed? Okay, so it's a real simple math. 769 minus 500 equals 269. You'll see that's the answer there as well. So you, I want you to try out um, number 12 on your own. All right, energy. All right, so these are um, some conversion, some conversions with different energy factors. They're going to tell you that a barrel of oil is 150 liters, and that one kilowatt hour is 3,400 BTUs of energy. So let's try number 13 together. You can check your answers right here. Those are the answers. Number 13, a city that uses 10 billion BTUs of energy a month is using how many kilowatt energies? Really easy. Let's write down what we know. 10 billion. BTUs, let's write that in scientific notation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One times ten to the seventh BTUs. Okay. And I want to make a conversion factor so that I turn this into kilowatt hours. So I want to turn it into kilowatt hours. I want BTUs to cancel out. So I know that one kilowatt hour gives me 3,400 BTUs. Okay, so a real easy conversion factor there. I need to divide these numbers. Well, let's turn this one into scientific notation to make it easier. 3.4 times 10 to the third. So I'm really dividing 1, point, 1 times 10 to the seventh divided by 3.4 times 10 to the third. And if you remember, what you're going to do is think of these separately. Do this division and do this division. 1 divided by 3.4, again, your long division, I'm going to just draw it over here, it will be um, 34 maybe into 10 to make it easier. Um, math on that, again, you should show your long division so that I know you didn't use a calculator. 1 divided by 3.4 equals about 0.2. 9 times, and then you can just subtract the exponents, 10 to the 4th. Alright, so I'm really close here, except for I need to move that over to make it in scientific notation, so 2.9 times 10 to the 5th kilowatt hours. Right. Let's see if you can try that for the others as well. Before I get to the end here, um, population, uh, you're going to need possibly some equations. So I'm going to write down the equations first, and then um, hopefully we'll be able to use these. So you should know that um, the, the population rate is equal to the population um, at the end or the, at the final minus the population initially at the beginning of the year divided by the initial population. You want to get the rate, you take final minus initial divided by initial. And then another one that's very handy to know is doubling time. The time it takes to, let's just put a D there, double is equal to 70 divided by the growth rate, which is usually K in this case. You could use an R if you want, it doesn't matter. 70 divided by the growth rate. So these are the two equations that we need that you should jot down. And erase those so I have room to write. All right, let's try the first one. Calculate the percentage growth rate for a country with a population of six million in the year when it had uh, 100,000 births, 70,000 deaths, 30,000 immigrants, and 50,000 immigrants. So I know that the population initially was what? Six million, okay? And then I wanna know what the population was at the end of the year. So I'm going to have to use all these data points. I had births, that's going to add. Um, deaths are going to subtract. Immigrants are going to add, and emigrants are going to subtract. So I have blue is add, and orange is subtract here. So I'm going to add about um, 130,000, and I'm going to subtract off 120,000. So basically, I've added about 10,000. 10, Let me just make sure. 70, yeah, I've added about 10,000. So the population at the end, 6 million, 
10,000. I should really um, write that out up here as well. Change that to a million. Okay. Now, just to make my, um, well, let's just do this. So now I need to figure out the birth rate. So the equation I gave you for birth rate was, remember, Inish, final minus initial divided by initial. So I'm going to take 6,000, 10,000 minus, or 6 million, 10,000 minus 6 million divided by 6 million. So um, subtracting these two, I get 10,000. I'm not going to rewrite those big numbers. And then divided by the initial population. Now, when you're doing this division in long division, you don't need to include all these zeros. They cancel each other out. So basically, I'm taking 1 divided by 600. Into 1, and we'll have to add those um, decimal points and do that calculation. So you can do that on your own. And I'll tell you right now, 1 divided by 600 equals... Equals 0.0. .0 Zero, one, six, seven, and rounding. So now I need to remember that this is a percentage, which is, I'm sorry, one. So that will give me times 100 will give me 0.167%. All right, so that's how you're gonna, gonna get that. All right, now for the next one, can't seem to, can't seem to get this thing to erase for me. There we go. For the next one, we're going to need to think um, a little outside the box, and this is an especially challenging question. I really don't imagine you will actually even see something similar to that in the AP exam, but let's try it anyway. We're going to use our doubling time um, as our helper. Okay, so if the town's growth rate is 1%, so for my equation, I know the growth rate is 1%, um, and the population size to start with is 10,000, how long will it take the population to grow to 40,000? So I know that um, it will grow to it, it, to double its time. I want to know how long it takes to get to double. And then I can double that again and get 40. So the first, the first double, remember the equation is 70 over K, will equal 70 divided by 1, which would equal 70 years. So it'll take 70 years to double to 20,000. Now the question is asking for 40,000, so I need to double again. It'll take another 70 years to do that, so I have 70 plus 70 equals 140. You also use this equation on number 18 as well, so hopefully that'll help you out. Last set here, half-life. Basically this um, chart is showing you uh, the half-life calculations that you're going to need, but you could figure it out very easily, right? You have 100% at the beginning, and then after so much time, you have 50% left, then half of 50 is 25, and half of 25 is 12.5, and half of 12.5 is 6.25. You could draw this all out, but the AP exam doesn't give it to you. So don't worry too much about this chart necessarily. Um, all right, so radium has a half-life of 1,500 years. How long will it take 20, 250 kilograms of radium to decay down to less than 10 kilograms. So let's just start dividing in half. So if we divide 250 in half, we're gonna get 125. And the amount of time here was 1,500 years. So and another 1,500 years later, we're gonna divide that in half again and get 62.5. And that was another 1,500 years. Divide it in half again, and you get 31.25, and that was another 1,500 years. Divide it in half again, 15.625, and that was another 1,500 years. I'm still not at 10, so I have to keep going one more time. 7.81 is half of that, and that was another 1,500 years. So I have one, two, three, four, five half lives, 1,500 each. Um, and that is going to add up to 7,500 years. All right. See if you can take a stab at the next one.
All right, so that completes the math review, and what your job is to do now is to go back through and make corrections to the original form, showing all work, showing all units, showing all long division and long multiplication. So I know you didn't use a calculator. And then you will get full points. All right, thanks for listening.